I'm Tom Baker, this is Chasing Cars, and today you join me on the Australian EV Challenge. We've got our first warning. Oh, not here, not now, no. My palms are so sweaty. And we have stopped in the driveway of the cemetery. Oh, that's nasty. Oh no, 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 we can't stop. Oh no. We're dead, it's over. Ah! Yeah, boy, this is exciting now. Today we're testing five EVs in the Australian landscape. We're here to test range and we're testing it properly. Driving these electric cars until their batteries are so flat we've got to put them on the back of tow trucks. And when they're flat, we'll let you know which one got the furthest and which one actually stood up to its manufacturer claimed range. We'll be giving out an award for each of the best EVs here. And we're doing this because range is seriously important in a big country like Australia. Running out of juice between country towns isn't so great. So in today's video, we'll show you just how far you can expect to get on just one charge. So today I'm driving the Nissan Leaf. So I'm driving the MG ZS EV today. So I am with the Hyundai Kona Electric Elite. The EV behind me is the Audi e-tron 55 Sportback first edition. This is of course the Tesla Model 3. Two of the cars we've assembled on today's test are cheap and cheerful, allowing you to buy into new electric car motoring without breaking the bank. And the MG ZS EV is Australia's cheapest EV, costing less than 50 grand with all on-roads included. We've also got the perennial Nissan Leaf, which is one of the very first electric cars on the Australian market. So while you might not get the longest range from these cars, they'll let you jump into a zero tailpipe emission future sooner. So we are just leaving Sydney. It's about seven o'clock and we're about to jump onto the freeway and head towards Goulburn. So when we left the office, this thing was reading 272 kilometers of range, but now already after traveling just about two Ks, three Ks, we're down to 248 kilometers which just doesn't bode well for the uphill run to Goulburn. Now I've got 263 kilometres of range in the MG, and I think that's going to be more than enough to get to our destination. Mr Place, how's the, uh, how's the range going on your end? No, it's pretty good, mate. We're about 100 k's in now, and I've got about 106 to go. So it's, a, it's a, still a bit down on the claim, but mm, we'll make it. That's good. I'm currently sitting at 121 to go. Yeah, I think we're both going to make it. So it'll be interesting to see what happens when we get there. So mate, we've done 134 Ks and my first warning light has come on for low charge because I've only got 55 kilometers left. Well, things are looking a little bit rosier for me. That's pretty bad. I've got um, 67 Ks of range left, but I've also got 28% of battery charge left. Here in the MG, the situation is getting a bit dire. I must say I've gone from amber warning lights to red warning lights that flash at me. Uh, I've got 19 Ks of range and it is 21 Ks to our destination, which means we possibly may not make it. We're 17 Ks from our destination and we've still got 30 Ks of range. I know Tom Place is having a bit of a stressful time in the MG, which is I think one kilometer in positive range, whereas we're you know, between 12 and 14 Ks. So I'm fairly confident, not sure how he's feeling back there. So we are 6.1 Ks away from our destination and I'm not even getting a readout anymore. It won't tell me how much I've got to go, which I, uh, I really wish it would. We've got our first warning. We're down to 9% battery, 23 kilometers of expected range in the leaf. And we've got a warning light telling me to charge now, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna push this thing on until it dies. And then we're gonna stick it on the back of a truck and charge it up and start all over again. Mate, I am, uh, I am not looking good. We've got 4.9 Ks to go and I'm not even getting a readout anymore. I have no idea if I'll make it or not. Oh goodness. I hope they've built in a little bit of factor of safety there. Yeah, I'm a big fan of, big fan of hills. Or, you know, the downhill ones now. Yes, downhill good, uphill bad. Oh, I'm losing power. I am losing power. Yeah, boy, this is exciting now. <laughs> We're 1.1 k's away now, and the car is really cutting my power. It won't let me accelerate past about 40%. It won't tell me how much range I've got, but I think I'm gonna get there because it's downhill all the way to the charging station. Here's the exit. We're coming off the Hume. Got a warning in front of me that says, battery power being depleted, please stop safely. I got my foot flat to the floor. Come on, little MG. I've got the tortoise. Come on. Come on. Oh, not here. Not now. No. <laughs> 
Come on, MG. Uh, we're crawling, we're crawling. We're doing 15 Ks an hour, 10 Ks an hour, five Ks an hour, and we are stopped. We've officially come to a stop now and we've done 191.6 kilometers in this car this morning, which is notably down on the claim of 263 Ks. We're on the beginning of the first of our exhaustion laps. All right, now we're down to 4% and the leaf has stopped giving me a range readout. So how far will we go? No percentage on the battery, no range left, and yet it's still going fine. When will it end? Oh, there goes the power. I got nothing. I got on the dials, it's only giving me four bars of acceleration now. We're in turtle mode. Look at the turtle. Uh oh, we're in neutral. We're coasting. Oh wow, this is cool. So we're going down a hill and it's put us into neutral to coast us to safety. I'm still going. Oh, this is cool. I like this, but we're done. The leaf is done. She's conked. Short of the 270k range, but only by 45k. So while the short range cars here give you great flexibility in the city, three of the cars on test promise bigger batteries and therefore more flexibility in the real world. These are the EVs truly designed to suit Australia's long distance driving. But which is best? The Audi e-tron is a premium choice, but it offers the shortest range of this pack on paper. Let's see how it goes in reality. The Hyundai Kona Electric has really generous range for the price, whereas the Tesla Model 3 Long Range promises to be the most flexible of all of the electric cars here. Let's see how it really stacks up on the road. Okay, we're off and with a range of 449 kilometers, the car is telling me we can do 426 right now. So still on the M5 in Sydney in the Audi 55 e-tron. We started with 372 range in the instrument pack. It now says 334 and we've done 51 Ks. So I'm in the Tesla Model 3 today. I've got 82% uh, of the battery left. I've traveled 83 kilometers. We're doing a few things to make this test fair. Uh, we've got five drivers. That's obviously a massive variable right out of the gate, but everybody that you're seeing today is a Chasing Cars presenter. So we all know the style. We all know each other really well, and we're all basically driving to the same set of conditions and in convoy. Uh, so we're sticking to the speed limit exactly. Uh, we're using the AC because I think that you know, we don't want to go backwards in terms of living standards. I think people want to use air conditioning. So we've got AC, fan speed one, at the highest temperature before the air actually starts to blow hot. So just comfortable in the cabin, using the stereo, not pounding the stereo too hard, not overtaking people unnecessarily, just, just cruising, just a road trip the way anyone would do it, really. Uh, and so that's how we're trying to keep it consistent. And, you know, I think it's a, it's a pretty fair test, all in all, and I'm keen to know what you think. We're 100 kilometers in, and our average use is 16 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. I've noticed that's crept up as we've been on the highway going at 110. From this point, efficiency should get better. I'm at 16.1 kilowatt hours per 100 k's at the moment. So we're finally on country roads here. This is the Monero Highway on the way to Cooma from Canberra. Lots of surface change now on quite a bit quieter here than the tyre noise back on those coarser surfaces on these continentals. The range is 65 k's to empty, so we're down to about 18%. So with the transition that we will all eventually be making to electric vehicles, if we're gonna embrace them properly, we must have absolute faith in their range and exactly what they can do. And to the Hyundai Kona Electric's credit, it seems to actually get things pretty much spot on. So I've just ticked over one third battery use. I'm down to 66% remaining. And the car's done 151 kilometers on our trip. Tom, are you there? I just wanted to know how far we've got to go to Kuma. 167 Ks to go. Uh, in my experience, the e-tron's been pretty thirsty, so how are you looking? Mate, we're at 147. I know we were close before, but we're, what's that, 18 k's down or something, 39% battery left. So you've got 147 left, 39%. 
Tesla is on 50%. I don't have an actual range readout in front of me, but I've done 229Ks on half the battery. Ian, how are you looking? Yeah, I'm on Easy Street. The uh, Hyundai is doing exceptionally well. I've got 51% battery, just knocked down to 50 now. So we're exactly halfway. I have 207 kilometers of range to go. So Kuma is looking easy. It's interesting for you in the Kona because you're at 50%, you've just ticked over to 50. We've all done 230 Ks. You're right behind me. I'm looking at you in my rear view mirror. So that would actually indicate the Kona's doing better than its claimed WLTP range. And that's despite the fact we've actually had the uphill section behind us. Yeah, every time I've tested this Kona Electric, it always seems to nail exactly what it range says it will be, or even better. So big kudos to Hyundai there, because it looks like you two are both uh, well behind quoted figures. Yeah, that's amazing. The 2021 Model 3 long range update is rated at 580 kilometers WLTP. At the moment, my live range is 460 Ks, so we'll see where we actually end up. But at the moment, the Kona is looking very accurate or even better. Ponch, from the trip computer, what's your kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers? 22.7 kilowatt hours. It was 24.2 in the city at the beginning, so it's slowly come down. That's still pretty thirsty. I'm doing 15.5 kilowatt hours per 100 Ks, which is staggeringly more efficient than the e-tron. Well, I'm trumping you all guys. I'm at 15 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers exactly, which is below Hyundai's official quoted figures. So yeah, once again, it's Hyundai in the lead. And of course, I'm a pretty smooth driver as well. So <laughs> maybe you guys better have a look at that. No doubt it all plays a part. So I'm 70 kilometers from the fast chargers in Kuma. And the good news is the Kona is saying it still has 120 kilometers of range to go. So our energy consumption is 14.5 kilowatt hours for 100 over our 330 kilometer trip so far. So everything's looking great for the Kona electric and it could prove to be the most efficient vehicle out of all our test cars. Wouldn't that be good? I'm not competitive, but it would be nice to win it if there's a prize. Is there a prize? Another update from the Tesla. I am at 34% battery. I've used 47 kilowatt hours of electricity to cover those 312 kilometers now. So I should have another sort of 27 kilowatt hours available to me. The anxiety hasn't kicked in yet, but I am starting to feel it. My plan is traveling with the pack that's aiming at the Kuma ultra rapid charges, but I'm planning to turn around and head back to Canberra on, on one charge. And it's touch and go at the moment, but the real anxiety in the group that's well and truly kicked in is in Poncha's Audi. Attention crew, the Audi has just had the first admittance of defeat by chucking up a 50 kilometers to done and you need to charge this battery. And pretty much instantly we're on 47. Right, we've just hit the outskirts of Kuma and the Kona has 70 kilometers left. The Tesla's going fine, but up ahead the e-tron is on whatever the electric equivalent of vapors is. Oh, and we've got a tortoise. Just flashed. It just said drive system warning at 17 k's an hour, limited performance. Um, and it threw up like a warning triangle with an exclamation mark in it. And the battery at the bottom is flashing between a yellow tortoise in a circle and the battery. But we're still on 100 on cruise. We still have air and we still have 3% to empty. We're gonna make it. He's gonna make it. It is possible to drive an e-tron from Sydney to Kuma. Hi, mate. Hi, mate. Uh, we are done. Um, it yep. did over 11 k's beyond zero. It just decided to slow down and stop, and we have stopped in the driveway of the cemetery, which is cemetery. which is not intentional. It just stopped That's here. Hilarious. So, Audi e-tron 55 Sportback. Audi Australia said claim of in excess of 400 kilometers, and it did 393, which is as a percentage is pretty good. We did 11.3 k's 
on the battery of zero charge and stopped without a fuss in the driveway of a cemetery. Okay, so here's an update on the Kona Electric. I have 8% battery left. It's telling me I have 33 kilometers until we're empty and we've done 426 kilometers in total. I've just had my first official warning. I have a red triangle with an exclamation mark in it and low EV battery warning telling me to visit the nearest charge station. So I think the Kona has officially gone into some kind of panic mode. Um, we're down to 4%. It dropped from 7%, 6%, 5%, 4% very quickly. I've got the turtle showed up on my dashboard. I have a battery warning light has said less than five percent charge electric car immediately so things are getting exciting okay so we're down to one percent um it hasn't seemed to restrict anything in the car so far which is is hopefully a good thing okay so i'm putting my foot down again i'm off cruise control just to see if it'll let me do it, it says power limited yeah it seems to be restricting me there but it's still going. Uh, it looks like it's becoming a bit more of a dead throttle pedal now. So we might be coming to the end of the road. Yeah, I've got a dead throttle pedal. Power limited, power limited. And... We're dead. It's over. It's a bit sad in a way. Well done, Hyundai. You did what you said you'd do. All right, let's get recovered. Well, now it's my time to get stressed. Um, in the Tesla, I've left Kuma, uh, all the other cars are done. This is the last car standing in the outright range test and we've got a problem. Uh, so we've done 397 kilometers. Uh, we've got 17% range left and we need to go 111 kilometers to the superchargers in Canberra. We've got 77 Ks till the supercharger I'm aiming for and predicted range is 55. My, my palms are so sweaty. <laughs> Doing this for a reason. Australia is a unique country, a unique environment. It is a country of distances, which means that range claims, efficiency claims matter. Oh no. No, no, we can't stop. We can't, no! Ah! <laughs> no, 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 okay, 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 we're still going, we're still going, we're still going. Ah, we've got to go up this hill. I feel like I'm about to sit an important exam or something. I'm so nervous. 490 kilometers coming up on the Odo. I said 500 was the goal. Can we do it? I don't know. 19 k's till our destination. Where is it getting this power from? Oh, we definitely have reduced power. There's, there's not much underfoot. We're doing 84 in a 100 zone and I can't get any more out of it. 507 k's, 74 kilowatt hours used. I could basically see the charges. 2.3, 2.3 kilometers away from the charges. Can we? Hopefully the ACT love affair with roundabouts and traffic lights doesn't vehicle shutting down all over safely. You're joking. We are 1.6 Ks from the charges. I'm still rolling. This is probably it though. No, I can't move. Nah, I'm, I'm done. 507.8 kilometers is the answer. So close. We got 1.5 kilometers away from the charger. <laughs> 507.8 Ks, this car did over 20 kilometers on nothing. So what were our scientific findings on the Australian EV challenge? How far do these five electric cars go on a single charge? Well, we've conducted a real world road trip here in Australia to find out exactly what you can expect if you put your money down for one of these five EVs. We'll also give out two awards, one for the EV that traveled the furthest outright and another for the EV that absolutely nailed its range claim. 
So the Nissan LEAF is probably one of the most popular EVs out there, so there's a lot of knowledge behind them, and frankly, it drives quite well out on the road. The ride is nice, and there's a surprising amount of talent to the chassis, and it feels pretty inoffensive, certainly when you're driving around urban environments. So efficiency-wise, the LEAF did okay. It reached 226 kilometers before it reached total exhaustion, and it only spent a little bit of time in limited turtle mode. The total efficiency was 17.6 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, which is pretty good considering this bunch, but not good enough to make it to the WLTP claim. So things I liked about the MG ZS EV is it's, it's quite good value for what it is. So at the end of our testing, when it was absolutely exhausted, we ended up getting 191.7 kilometres out of it until it didn't move anymore. And the total trip had an efficiency rating of about 22.2 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometre. I suppose the thing I like about the e-tron is that it's really seamless. It's just a smooth car to drive in general. And while driving it in an efficiency mode is not the most exciting mode that you can drive it in, it actually is completely Completely unobtrusive and that's kind of the whole point of the car to normalize an EV experience so if you want your EV to be just like any other car but electric then the e-tron is yours the e-tron achieved 392.5 kilometers in total range and used 22 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers so that brings us to the winners of the Australian EV challenge now going into this we didn't really know whether there was going to be one or two winners but of course given there's two cars behind me, you know the answer to that. And that's because we have a separate winner for outright range, the Tesla Model 3 long range, which isn't a surprise really. But then we have a separate winner for the accuracy of range claim, which is another thing that's very important, particularly in a big country like Australia with long distances between towns and cities. And that winner is the Hyundai Kona Electric. And we'll explain a little bit more about why these two cars won in their respective categories. So why has the Kona won our range test? Well, it is because Hyundai claims 449 kilometers and it achieved 450 kilometers. No other electric vehicle in our test came close in terms of a percentage. The Audi next nearest at 9%. Not only that, the Hyundai was also the most efficient in our group test at 14.2 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. So a resounding victory for the Hyundai here. The major component in any range test is always going to be which car goes the furthest and that was the Tesla Model 3 long range. At 507.9 kilometres this car goes a long way on a single charge and it's particularly impressive when you take into account the fact that much of our test was conducted on 100 km per hour country highways here in Australia which is a reasonably taxing environment. So that was the Chasing Cars Australian EV Challenge. Hopefully you found we've answered quite a few questions. Namely, how far each of these vehicles really goes until total exhaustion, and how far each of these EVs gets to their claimed WLTP range and efficiency. And we've had a couple of clear winners today. And we've spoken about just how far the Tesla Model 3 long range can go in Australia, and just how accurate the Hyundai Kona Electric is to its claimed range and economy and both vehicles are very impressive. But even more impressive is just how broad EVs are now getting in the Australian market. And you can get into a very solid short range EV for under $50,000 here in Australia. At the other end of the spectrum, you can get into a truly luxurious Audi e-tron with great interior quality if you're willing to spend what they require. But like so many things in life, the sweet spot ends up being right in the middle where in either the Tesla or the Hyundai, you get a great combination of value, range, economy, and everyday livability. But I'm keen to know your thoughts. Let me know down below in the comments if you're considering an EV, whether you think your next purchase will be electrified or if you're sticking to combustion for now. While you're there, make sure to hit subscribe and the notification bell. And as always, thanks for watching Chasing Cars.